user play then work hard um, said just started TRT or it's testosterone replacement therapy I'm not thrilled with getting injections every week I feel better but can you address any downside so maybe this is a useful uh, opportunity to just talk a little bit about testosterone replacement therapy um, and downsides I'm actually surprised how many people don't know about it so it's like a useful topic to talk about <laughs> Uh, testosterone replacement therapy is generally uh, for the treatment of low testosterone or what's called secondary hypogonadism uh, when your body is not producing enough of its own testosterone so the solution to that is uh, if your body's not making enough you can uh, inject it the reason it's injectable is because testosterone is not very orally bioavailable you can't there's no testosterone pill uh, essentially that you can take um, and so you have to inject it the downside of injecting it is one, it's obviously a pain in the ass because that's where you inject testosterone. Um, but the other part of it that's uh, a downside is um, your body is actually kind of intelligent and it realizes when it's getting enough testosterone. And so when you take it externally or exogenously, your endogenous or your internal production shuts down. And so your testes or your testicles, where the word testosterone comes from, are like, oh, I'm getting enough, we're, we're getting enough testosterone, so I can go on vacation essentially. And so your testicles literally shrink or atrophy, they become smaller, um, and they stop producing their own testosterone. The consequence of that is A, you actually become dependent on those external injections. So in a lot of ways, it's almost like a type one diabetic who cannot produce their own insulin, which is also a hormone like testosterone. And so they rely on injecting themselves with insulin. The other downside is when your, testo your testes no longer produce their own testosterone, um, you become generally infertile. And so if you still want to maintain your ability to produce sperm and have children, it's not a great idea to do TRT. There are ways of mitigating that. There's something called HCG that you can take. It's another uh, hormone that's injectable that can try to maintain fertility levels while on TRT. But now you're injecting two things and handling two different drugs. Um, or you can come off of it. You can come off of TRT when you're ready to have children and your body's going to still be shut down. And so you have to do something called a PCT or post cycle therapy to almost like restart your system. In a lot of ways, think about like a car that you left in the garage for like 11 months and you didn't turn on, turn it on, the battery's clearly gonna be dead. So you probably need to replace the battery and get a tune up and restart your system. So um, it is possible, I'm not saying that, that infertility is guaranteed or that it's forever, it's not. Sometimes people can still have kids uh, on TRT uh, if they take HCG or they can restart the system. But generally speaking, uh, it's a major risk. It's a major downside. That's why generally young men do not do TRT. If you, if you, unless you have what's called primary hypogonadism. So primary hypogonadism is almost like being a type one diabetic. Literally your testes cannot produce their own testosterone because you have a testicular injury or some other issue, but that's pretty rare. You're talking about a few percentage of people. Um, if that's the case, then sure, there's no other way for you to produce testosterone. For everyone else, uh, you should try to produce your own testosterone. <laughs> There are, there are forms of testosterone that um, avoid injections. So there is a, essentially a gel or a cream. You can rub it on your scrotum um, and it does, uh, does absorb uh, through the skin essentially. And so that way you can obviously avoid the injections. You should go talk to your doctor about whether that's a good option for you. Um, there is a downside to that, which is like the, the moment that you put it on, you can't like rub it on your girlfriend or wife. You have to like wash it off because it is masculinizing, right? So you don't you don't want rubbing you don't want testosterone rubbing off on a woman. So uh, you have to be very careful about the application and the timing of it. So that's a downside compared to the injections. Still has the same issues with shutting down your own production. Still has the same issues with um, causing infertility. So. Uh, that's why I'm generally not a fan of TRT for young men. There are um, newer solutions. In fact, this is something that we're working on at Maximus that uh, do not involve injections. They're oral medications. And in fact, they, they do the opposite. They actually stimulate your body's own production of endogenous testosterone. Much more natural approach than bioidentical testosterone because your, your testes are producing its own testosterone, which is exactly what it should be doing. And you should be maintaining your own fertility, both for 
the reason of like, hey, if you want to have kids, it's a good idea to not have not shut down your balls and be able to produce kids. I actually make a really interesting psychological argument as well, which is let's say you're your guy in your 20s, you're not planning on having kids anytime soon. So you're like, well, what's the downside of becoming infertile? I think uh, a lot of guys power is infertility. If you literally think about it, your biological purpose in life is to reproduce, right? And so the moment that you are essentially infertile, even on a subconscious level, you're like, it kind of takes your your power away, your your uh, your mojo to use a sort of an Austin Powers analogy. And, and, and maybe this is a very Freudian notion, but I think men's uh, success and drive and power comes from not only their testosterone um, and their libido, but but the notion of their virility, like your ability to reproduce. And I think when you take that away, especially in a very artificial chemical way through TRT, it does kind of take your mojo away. With this newer approach, right, which is testosterone optimization or testosterone maximization through oral prescription medications that increase your fertility, it actually makes your balls bigger, increases testicular volume, increases sperm count, makes you more fertile. And like I said, whether or not you want to have kids, there is kind of a magic to be like, hey, I'm a virile man. And I think there's a lot of power in that. Every guy that's listening to this right now, you have half the sperm that your grandfather had, which is a very alarming statistic, right? It's kind of crazy. Sperm counts have gone down 1% per year for basically the last uh, 50 years or so, in 1973 to 2011, they've gone down 59%. It's even more than 1% a year. Um, it's very disturbing. Um, and part of that is due to lifestyle reasons like obesity, but a lot of it is due to these endocrine disrupting chemicals that I've mentioned before. Uh, there's a certain class of chemicals. They're specially used in um, waterproofing or flame retardants. So like fire extinguishers, waterproof jackets, uh, stain resistant carpets and couches have this chemical. And Teflon is like, and all these kind of sticky coatings that we put on stuff are full of these uh, PFASs. They're terrible in that they linger in the environment forever. They also linger in your body forever. In fact, 95% of people have these literally in your body right now, which is a very sad fact. We've essentially polluted uh, ourselves. Um, and it's probably a major reason why um, we're less masculine and we're less ver virile than even our fathers and our grandfathers were. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible tragedy. Um, that's why I think every guy, quite frankly, should be an environmentalist because even if you're not a hippie tree hugger, on a very practical level, it is sapping your testosterone, it's sapping your sperm count, and it's probably gonna prematurely give a lot of us cancer. And it's terrible and we should do something to fix that. But in the meantime, there is some things you should do, which is avoid those things, the things that I mentioned, if possible, um, try to and uh, try to avoid plastics, uh, you know, as much as possible. Fast foods are particularly bad, like the lining of popcorn um, bags have those chemicals. The wrappers of burgers at fast food restaurants, they use those same chemicals. So obviously, like, you know, using natural products, use wood, use steel, use glass for all your containers. Uh, don't eat out as much. Uh, you can mitigate some of that damage. And then obviously we're, you know, we're working on some stuff at Maximus, the Maximus as well that can help address it a little bit more on a physiological level as well.